Okay, today we're going to talk about climate and change and we're going to think about the theories that explain uh, long-term climatic change uh, and some of the kind of natural reasons why our climate might change and has changed in the past. Uh, now we have some props today so I need you to use your imagination. Uh, I have a little globe here um, that is obviously going to be our earth. Um, now I have a, a napkin uh, and I want you to use your imagination. This is going to be an ash cloud. You will see how that works in a minute. And um, I have a satsuma here. Uh, this is supposed to be uh, the sun. Um, as I said, you are going to have to use your imagination and these things are not to scale. Right, okay, so there are three theories here that we're going to be talking about um, as to natural reasons why our climate might change. Theory number one is, here we go, we've got some signs, eruption theory, okay, eruption theory, all to do with volcanoes, alright, so here's how it works, on the surface of our earth, as hopefully you know, there are a number of active volcanoes, now when a volcano erupts, often you end up with an ash cloud, now that ash cloud we know can cause major disruption um, in many ways but one thing that can happen if there's a lot of ash it can be blown by winds uh, around the uh, the Earth's atmosphere and it can cover up uh, the Earth's atmosphere now the rays of sunlight are trying to get in this is the Sun it's far away that's why it's so small um, they're traveling through space towards the Earth and the Sun's rays warm up our Earth's atmosphere. Um, however, if the layer of ash is covering up the Earth, the sun's rays can't warm that atmosphere up, um, and so instead the sun's rays just bounce straight back out to space, which results in a cooling of our climate. Now we have evidence of this happening in the past. Um, in 1991, Mount Pinatubo erupted, uh, it's in the Philippines, and the ash was spread around the Earth's atmosphere just like this, and uh, we lost 10% of the sunlight entering the atmosphere and global temperatures actually dropped by about half a degree. Doesn't sound very much, but it, do, it can have a major impact on things like harvests. Uh, so that is theory number one. Now let's get rid of the ash cloud. Theory number two is, number two is sunspot theory. Sunspot theory, okay? So uh, as it says in the name, this has something to do with the sun. So let's get our sun back up here, okay? There is our sun, it's very tiny. Um, now, scientists have noticed that occasionally the sun, when you look at it through telescopes, um, has black spots on it. And these black spots indicate increased solar activity and radioactive activity on the surface of the sun. When we have these black spots, more solar flares are thrown out of the sun's surface uh, towards Earth. Okay, And those solar flares enter the Earth's atmosphere and actually warm up the Earth's climate. Now at times the sun has more black spots and at other times it has less. Uh, when it has less black spots, it's throwing out less heat. When it has more black spots, it's throwing out more heat. Um, and this cycle, uh, scientists have noticed, seems to work on about 11 year cycle. Uh, so there are times when the Earth is slightly warmer and when it's slightly cooler. So that's sunspot theory. The last theory that we're going to talk about today, theory number three, is orbital theory. Orbital theory. And this is to do with the orbit of the Earth around the sun. So here we have the earth and here we have the sun, obviously completely not to scale. Uh, as we know the earth orbits around the sun, okay, orbits around the sun. However sometimes this orbit is circular and sometimes it's more oval shaped. I'm going to show you almost like a bird's eye view. Sometimes it's circular and sometimes it's more oval like this, okay? And I'm not sure quite how well that came across, but if you have a circular orbit, the Earth's climate stays fairly uh, mild, um, 
and the seasons don't change too much. If you have a more kind of oval orbit, then you get more extremes in temperature. We also know that the Earth is on an axis, it's tilted, and this tilt changes. Sometimes it's more tilted than at other times, and uh, this can affect how much sunlight the Earth is receiving as well. It also wobbles on its uh, axis, and again, this can affect the amount of sunlight that the Earth is receiving. Um, and different parts of the world can be affected in different ways, but it basically means that at certain times the climate is fairly steady, fairly stable, and at other times we will experience extremes in temperature, very, very cold or very, very hot. So, three theories there for you to learn about the natural reasons why our climate may change on a global scale. Okay, check out my other videos on climate and change for more revision on this unit. Good luck!